Okay. Lord God the Father, I just ask you to bless this time, Lord God. Help us together in your word. And Lord, just pray, just help us. Guide us to what you want us to do, Lord. What you will have your will to be in our lives, Lord. For two or three are gathered together in your name, here you are. And Lord, just thank you for this nice breeze and thank you for this nice day. And Lord, and this protection that we have here, that we can use it for your word. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so, John chapter 1. And we left off in John 1, 21. And we've got an interesting subject today of Moses and Elijah. And what we've studied so far before is we've studied the law with Moses. We studied the prophets with Elijah. Last, uh, a couple weeks ago, we studied who Elijah was. Last week, we, learned, we looked at that prophet, Moses, and his comparison to Jesus Christ. In John 1.21, they asked him, say, what then? Art thou Elias? Which we saw as Elijah. And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? We looked at, that was Moses. And he answered, no. And... What we do is we're in no rush. We're taking the scriptures. I mean, we've got 21 verses so far we've done. We've done in a short time. But we've gone into and we dug in a lot of ground. And with looking at Moses and looking at Elijah now, Moses and Elijah together is a whole new, is a whole Bible subject. I mean, Moses picks up in the book of Exodus and he dies in the book of Deuteronomy. It's a wonderful life and story of the ministry of Moses. Elijah is a man that just shows up on the scene. And he's got a remarkable life. And together these two men, when you look at their, their life in the Bible. And you realize you're going to have what we're going to look at today. You're going to have the second coming of Moses. And you're going to have the second coming of Elijah. Now Moses died on the mountain. And we read that Michael had a dispute over the body of Moses. We don't know where the body of Moses lies today. And we read in, with Elijah, he was raptured. Where Elijah saw him go up. And what we're going to put forth today is, again... Elijah and Moses. So let's take our Bibles to Matthew 16. And we'll go slow so we can get it all. And I don't think we're in any rush. Matthew 16, verse 14. And this is the same thing that we read in John chapter 1, but there's another character that shows up, another prophet. And they asked him, said, and they said, some say, that another time, Jesus says, who, who do they say that I am? And his disciples there, some say that thou art John the Baptist. John the Baptist has already died by now. Some say Elias, there's Elijah. Now, this is later on in Jesus' ministry. Others say Jeremiah, that's Jeremiah, mm -hmm. and one of the prophets. He says, but who say, but who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answers, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answers, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So they're asking in John chapter 1, they're asking John the Baptist, who are you? Are you Elias? Are you Moses? Now here Jesus is taking his disciples off to the side later on. He says, well, who do men say who I am? Who am I? There's that Elias again. Elias is on the minds of the Jewish people. They're looking for the coming of Elias because according to the scriptures, he's supposed to come back. They're looking for Moses. They're supposed to be looking for the Messiah, but they're not... We have no interest in Jesus. Jesus is not their expectation of the Messiah. So, that's an interesting fact. Here we are in 
Matthew 17, verse 10. Matthew 17, 10. Now he's like, who are we? They're liars. Now the disciples put forth a question to Jesus, Matthew 17, 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias or Elijah must come? So now, here's the question we're asking ourselves. Why is everybody looking for Elijah? Elias. That's the, that's the Greek form of Elijah. Why is everybody looking for Elias, Jesus? And Jesus answered and said to them, Elias truly shall come. Out of the mouth of Jesus, there is Jesus saying, listen, Elias, Elijah, Elias is coming. Jesus said there's, there's the coming of Elijah. And restore all things. But I say unto you, Elias is come already. And they knew him not. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise also the Son of Man may suffer these things. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Here's a Bible standard. Did they look forward to Jesus on the cross of Calvary in the Old Testament? No. Because had they were looking for Jesus the Messiah, Jesus just told them, Elisha showed up. He showed up in the person of John the Baptist, and yet they beheaded him. John the Baptist, had the nation of Israel received Jesus, John the Baptist would have been Elijah, and everything we're going to study today would have happened throughout the book of Acts. But in the book of Acts, when Stephen gives the detailed history of Israel, in Acts chapter 7, and they stone him, Instead of receiving the Messiah, and it's like, okay, I'll give you one more chance. I'm going to send you the Apostle Paul. And they start stoning Paul. They start trying to kill Paul. They're giving Paul a hard time. They rebuke Paul. They're just, at one point, Paul says, that's it. Your blood be above. I'm going after the Gentiles. <laughs> and Israel, as a nation, is put on a shelf for a while. And we Gentiles are coming to the picture. If they had really, truly sought the Messiah and had received Jesus Christ as their Messiah, then John the Baptist would have been Elijah. And we would be, this being about 30 A.D. He died 33 A.D. About 40 A.D. would have, would have been the end of the tribulation period. And we would be in the millennium right now. A thousand years, no. A thousand, a thousand forty would end the millennium and we be in the new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem today. Right now we're, we're, we are under a Roman calendar of the Roman Catholic Church. The Jujurian the Jujur calendar that we use today is Roman Catholic and ain't God. God goes by the Hebrew calendar. So Jesus said, hey, Elijah is supposed to show up. He did show up, but you rejected us. You rejected us. So we have now uh, Matthew 17, 3. This is the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going on his way to the cross. On the Mount of Transfiguration, behold, there appeared unto him Moses, that prophet, and Elias, Elijah, talking with him. And answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Now here's a question that, that's answered that you don't really see right now. Here's a bonus point. We get to heaven. Is Ron going to know me? Am I going to know Ron? Am I going to know Louise? Am I going to know Rachel? In heaven. That's a question. Everybody, are we going to know each other? How did Peter know that was Moses and that was Elijah? We're going to know each other by who we are. I mean, Moses and Elijah wasn't wearing a, a name tag saying, Hello, my name is Moses. 
it tells you that Peter, James, and John were asleep. And they woke up, they're rubbing their eyes. Oh, wow, there's Jesus. Hey, that's Moses. You know how many years it's been since Moses has been dead? Where we are with Peter? And Peter's like, who's that other? Oh, that, hey, that's Elijah. That's Elijah. You know how many years Elijah's been raptured? And yet Peter, James, and John, hey, that's Moses, that's Elijah. We're going to know each other. We're, even though we're going to get a brand new body, we're going to look like Christ. Our, and I'm going to say kind of character maybe, and I'm not really sure how it's going to happen, but we're going to know each other. Hey, Ron, you know. Now Ron's going to look like Jesus, I'm going to look like Jesus, you're going to look like Jesus. But that's still character trait of us. Mm-hmm. Like Peter recognized Moses and Elijah. And it's been many, 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 many years. So the question is, will we recognize each other? Peter recognized Moses and Elijah. So, Mark chapter 9, verse 4. Mark chapter 9, verse 4. And we're going to read the same thing we just read, that Jesus transferred gate. This is important. We, here's two times what we're going to read. Do you realize the actual birth of Jesus is mentioned once in the Bible? The birth. Once. The birth of Jesus was only mentioned once in the Bible. The Gospel of Luke. And yet the death, burial, and resurrection, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and various other places in the Bible. So here's the trans- Mount of Transfiguration. We've read it in Matthew. Let's read it in Mark. Mark chapter 9, verse 4. What we just read, and there appeared unto them Elias and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter answered, said unto Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make the tabernacles one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Peter knew who those men were without wearing a name badge. And what is Jesus doing? We, we talked about this before. He's going to Moses. Moses, the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. As the Messiah, Moses, have I fulfilled everything that the law has said? Yep, all you got to do is go to the cross and die. Check. Elijah, of all the prophets and what the prophets say and everything, have I fulfilled everything except going to the cross and dying? Elias, in charge of the prophets, says, yep, go to the cross. Jesus is checking with the law. Remember we did that a couple weeks ago. The law and Jesus is checking with the prophets to say, hey, I want to make sure all scripture is fulfilled. With Peter, James, and John witnessing this whole event. And then they go up. Next place. Luke chapter 9, verse 30. Luke chapter 9, verse 30. How important is what we're just reading? Well, Luke 9, 30. Because we're going to get into some real interesting events of the Bible. We're going to get into prophecy today. Prophecy that we're not going to see because we're going to be raptured. Well, I don't know what we're going to know in heaven, but Luke chapter 9, verse 30. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah. Three times. Matthew, Mark, Luke. This is important. This is more important than the birth of Jesus. And yet your typical American wrongly celebrates December 25th as Jesus' birthday. We make this all big hoopla. And God's like, you know, in my Bible it's only mentioned once. What about Moses and Elijah? How many Baptist churches out there know what we're reading today? I'll tell you, very few. Let's keep reading. Behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, and appeared in glory. And they spake of his decease, his death, which he should accomplish in Jerusalem. Guys, Moses, Elijah, yes, Jesus, am I fulfilling everything? Have I forgotten anything of the law and the prophets? Nope. But Peter and they that were with him, James and John, were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with them. 
And came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make these three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. I'll give Peter credit for one thing. He puts Jesus first. You know what? Peter's saying, hey, let's build three tents here and let's live here. Peter, Jesus has got to go to the cross. But Peter, James, and John are fast asleep. Moses and Elijah are, 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 have showed up and they're talking to Jesus. They're, they're checking out his death. Because what does the Bible say? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. Moses and Go back and read Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And you'll find the death of Jesus. Go back and look at the law of Moses. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and all those prophets that I gave you the paper about. Mm -hmm. And what will you read? You'll read about the death of Jesus. Jesus just said so, right here. They talked about his deceit. So in the law and in the prophets is the death of Jesus. So idiots come along, and I said idiots, I want to make sure you know I said idiots, will say they look forward to the cross. Peter's not looking forward to the cross. He's like, let's stay here and make a camp out. If Peter's looking forward to the cross, they're like, okay, Jesus, let's go to Calvary. Peter ain't looking. No one's looking. Where is Israel right now if they're looking for the cross? They've left Jesus long behind they're looking to kill Jesus. That's what they're going to fulfill. So there's three places in the Bible. A lot more than the birth. And here is two important men with Jesus. Moses and Elijah. And we've been talking about them for the last four weeks. Now let's dig into some information. Revelation chapter 11. And you're not going to find this in your typical Baptist church. We're going to look at prophecy. And this is not church prophecy because in Revelation chapter 4, the church is raptured. The last church age is Gen I mean, Revelation chapter 3. We're in Revelation chapter 11. The church is in heaven. I believe, and this can be wrong, so I'll tell you it can be wrong. I believe during Jacob's trouble, seven years, I believe it's going to be, the seven years is going to be the entire time of the judgment seat of Christ. I believe that's how long the, the Christians are going to be judged. But I can be wrong. But I do know one thing. Between the rapture and the second advent of Jesus, somewhere in that time is our judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. And we'll get into that pretty soon. We'll, we'll, we will do a de detailed study, Lord willing, of the judgment seat of Christ and the crown will earn. That will be detailed. If you think this is detailed, wait till we get to that, Lord willing. So, Revelation chapter 4, the church is raptured. Revelation chapter 11, we're in the tribulation period. Not the church, the people left behind in Israel. In Revelation chapter 11... Let's read it and go back. And there was given me a reed like to a rod. And you see a tape measure. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and then that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, there's the temple. The temple is coming back. Now is that temple going to be built during the church age? I don't know. But definitely during Jacob's trouble, the time we call the tribulation period, there is a temple in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, and the dumb of the rock is gone. Something's going to happen to that dumb of rock that they're going to build that temple. And measure it not, for it's given unto the Gentiles. For the holy city shall be treaded underfoot 42 months. We're reading through this verse, and we'll come back. And I will give power on my two witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. That's what John the Baptist was wearing when he showed up. These are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. 
If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed by their bad breath of fire. Talk about heartburn. You come up to these two characters and you give them a hard time, fire comes out and they burn right there. That's important. We're going to come back and read through this again. But that's important. They have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them into blood. Now, does that sound familiar? And to smite the earth with plagues as oft as they will. These are these two ologies. These are these two prophets that come back. During the tribulation period. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast, the Antichrist, that's the beast, that sendeth out the bottom split shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So these two prophets in the tribulation period come up, they got a ministry, and the Antichrist kills them. And we'll come back to this again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where was Jesus crucified? Outside of Jerusalem. This city where the temple is. And the day of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Well, that's not the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is three days and three nights. And shall, not, and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over their make merry Christmas. And send gifts one to another. There's Christmas. There's Mary. There's your presents. And you know what their Christmas is in, in the tribulation period? The, the Antichrist has killed the two prophets of God. Celebration. Kumbaya. Let's give out presents. Let's give out the tree. Let's make merry. There's your Christmas right there in the Bible. And it has nothing to do with December 25th. And it has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. It is the Antichrist has killed the two prophets of God. Hooray! The Baptist churches need to get in the Bible. Gifts give to one of these two prophets tormented them that dwelled on the earth. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life, the Holy Spirit, entered them, and they stood upon their feet in great fear upon them that saw. They're, they're dead in the ground, and they stand up alive. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Come up hither. That's not the church. The church is, is Revelation chapter 4. This is Revelation chapter 11. There's a rapture in the middle of the church age. I mean, excuse me. There's a, let's see, I just said, there's a rapture in the middle of the tribulation period. There's more than one rapture. And people get it all messed up and think, oh, all the raptures when the church goes up. We're not the only rapture. There's others. And there's already been two raptures. Enoch was, ra was raptured to heaven. Back in Genesis, I forget which chapter. Five. Genesis chapter five, Enoch was raptured to heaven. Elijah was raptured to heaven with, with, the, with the, the horses and the chariots. It's like a, like a Christian I know, idiot. Oh, we have the only gospel. No, we don't. There's other gospels. So there's more than one. So in verse 12, come up hither. Here's a rapture in the tribulation, and they send it up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them like us. We're going to go up in the clouds, the Bible said. So are these two men. And at the same hour that this happened, there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city, Jerusalem, fell. And the earthquake were slain men, 7,000, and the raiment were frightened or scared and gave God the glory of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe comes quickly. And there are three woes. This is the second woe. This, this is a big woe. Woe. So, we've got two witnesses. It's 1,260 days. 42 months or three and a half years. This 
time is talking about in verse 3. Chapter 11, verse 3. Three and a half years. The two olive trees and there's two candlesticks. And we talked about candlesticks the other day on the phone. Now we're, oh, yeah. oh. now we're going to get some interest. Malachi chapter 4. The last book of the Old Testament. Just before Matthew. We've been there before. Malachi chapter 4, the very last chapter in Malachi. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. You didn't think there was so much in John chapter 1. This is, this is all Bible. You can't study a chapter in the Bible and it takes time. The Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be chained, rightly divine the word of truth. Uh, Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all do wickedly shall stumble, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave ne yeah, it shall leave them neither root or branch. That's the second advent. But unto you the fear my name, the Son, capital S, of righteousness, arise with healing in his wing for Israel. And shall go forth and grow up as calves of the skull. Of the skull. You shall tread down the wicked. Second advent. And they shall be ashes on the soles of your feet in the day. I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Second advent. Remember the law of Moses. We studied that. Which I commanded to Mount Horeb. Exodus 20. For all Israel. Not the church with statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great dreadful day of the Lord. That's what Jesus told his disciples. Elijah is supposed to come. He did come. Israel totally rejected the law of Moses. Israel totally rejected the prophets. They, they beheaded John the Baptist. They did what they did with him. They put Jesus on the cross. They rejected the preaching of Jesus through the book of Acts. Revelation chapter 11. Up comes two men. It's Elijah. And they come for their period of time. And the next great event for Israel at that point, after uh, Revelation chapter 11, it will be the second advent. But there's more, there's another set of woes, and there's, there's more to happen. But Moses and Elijah are showing up, and we saw that in Revelation chapter 11. Now, so they, Moses and Elijah shows up before Jesus would show up. John the Baptist showed up before Jesus showed up. If Israel had received Jesus as their Messiah, the birth of Jesus would have been the first advent and the second advent. But they didn't. So we don't need to worry about that. They didn't receive their Messiah. They did not look forward to the cross. Zechariah, a few pages back, Zechariah, Old Testament. Zechariah. Yeah, new Bible here, so I can see. That's Zechariah. Zechariah chapter four, just before Malachi. Last end of the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter four. It's all what we're doing today is about Moses and Elijah and the tribulation period. You're not going to witness this if you're a Christian. We're going to be in glory. We don't come back to Revelation 19 when Jesus comes back. So Zechariah chapter 4, verse 3. And two olive trees, remember the two olive trees in 11 chapter 4? Revelation chapter 11, verse 4. The two olive trees by it 
one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So there's the olive. Verse 11. Chapter 4, verse 11. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees? Good question. Upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof. Good question. Verse 14. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Up in glory, you got God sitting on the throne. And next to God on the throne and the right hand of God is Jesus Christ. Next to God and next to Jesus, there's two people standing there. They're the two anointed ones. They are likened to two olive trees and, and candlesticks. And they stand on the right hand and the left hand of God the Father and God the Son. They're two anointed ones. Malachi chapter 4 tells us exactly who they are. They're Moses and Elijah. On the Mount of Transfiguration, it tells us who Zechariah is talking about. It's Moses and Elijah. There is Jesus God manifested in the flesh on the Mount of Transfiguration. And on his right and on his left is Moses and Elijah as you would see them in glory. When we get to heaven, you're going to see God, but God's a spirit. You, so you, you know what I mean. You're going to see God, and you're going to see Jesus at the right hand of God, and then there are going to be two men. And we're going to look and say, hey, that's Moses, and that's Elijah. And you're going to say, well, where did you get that from, Ron? You're going to say, listen, Brother Stiley taught that on a Friday afternoon in the Bible. Why didn't you know it? But we're going to know them anyway, no matter Bible study or no Bible, because Peter knew who they were. And then next to those two guys, and I'm going to tell you what you're going to see in heaven. And next to those two guys in heaven, you're going to see four beasts. And they got four faces. A lion, a man of faith, an ox, and an eagle. Those are the four cherubims. And they cry, holy, 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 O Lord God Almighty, you know, for all eternity. And then you got four and twenty-four. You got twenty-four elders. I don't know who they are. Nobody knows who they are. And then you got masses and masses and masses of angels, innumerable. And then guess who you got? You got Christians. And then you'll have Jews. That's what heaven's going to be. That's everything right now. So much of what we're reading now. So, and the two olives and are the type of the Holy Spirit, the oil. Revelation chapter eleven again. Now we're going to break down what we've read. We'll break it down. So we're going from John chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 11. And we'll study out Revelation 11, verse 5. We're going to look at these two witnesses, verse 3. And we're going to, we're going to look at some other scriptures, but we're going to stay primary in Revelation chapter 11. And we'll look at some... Old Testament scriptures in a moment. But in Revelation chapter 11, verse 3, I, that's Jesus speaking, give power unto my two witnesses, Malachi and Zechariah, the two anointed ones. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. That's exactly how John the Baptist showed up. Sackcloth and eaten locusts. And I said that's two. Three and, a half, uh, two, three and a half years, 42 months. These are the two olive trees, Zechariah 4, 3. Zechariah said they're the two anointed ones. Revelation, Jesus said those are the two olive trees. And the two candlesticks standing before God of all the earth. To the left and to the right of God and Jesus. These are two pork and beans. God and, I mean God, Moses and Elijah. But, okay, two olive trees. Let's, we don't know who their names are, right? but we do. But let, let's take it as we don't know who they are. If, verse 5, if any man will hurt them, any man of hurt, while they're walking around on this earth, if you hurt these two, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Fire comes out. 
fire. Not a sword, a fire. All right, so. Uh, that's my part of my notes here. Uh, okay, so now. Second Kings 1.10. Back in the Old Testament. Second Kings 1.10. We'll be going back and forth a few places in the You got the Samuels and then you got the Kings. Second Kings 1. Second Kings 1.10. Fire came out of their mouth. Second Kings 1.10. And Elijah. Oh, who's that? There's one of our characters. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of the 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came, fire, there, came, there came down fire from heaven and consumed him in his fifty. Elijah said, if I be a man of God, fire come down and burn you and your army. <laughs> and he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said, O man of God, thus hath the king said, come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven, consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him in the fifty. Elijah has burned a hundred and two men in his ministry. Back to Revelation chapter 11. Verse 5. You see, when you read the Old Testament, you're also reading the New Testament. You're reading prophecy. That your typical baby Baptist can't get this. It's a shame. Revelation 11, verse 5. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth. Gee, I wonder who that could be. 2 Kings 1, 10 told us who it was. There's Elijah. Let fire... <laughs> You're dead. Okay, Elijah. There's Elijah. You don't want, we won't, Christians will not. So the people who are left behind after the rest, you don't want to mess with Elijah in the tribulation period. And devour his enemies, verse 5, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed by the fire that comes out. Now they didn't hurt Elijah in, in 2 Kings chapter 1, but in the tribulation period, you, you hurt you give Elijah a boo-boo and you're burnt. That's some power. These have power to shut up heaven, verse 7. That it rain not in the days of his prophecy, their prophecy. So, in the, in the tribulation period, if you anger Elijah, fire. And there's somebody who, had, who says in the tribulation period, you know what, Lord? The weatherman says it's going to be rainy and all that. God, I say there's no rain at all. Turn off the clouds. There's also mentioned in the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings, back to the Old Testament, chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. Right after the Samuel, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings 17, 1. You see why you've got to read the whole Bible? Because what we're reading in the Old Testament is showing up in prophecy. And everybody tell you, prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. There's tons of prophecy in the Bible. And you ask these people, do you read the Old Testament? No. Then you don't know nothing. It doesn't say, study the New Testament. No, it says, study the Bible. So, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And Elijah, there he is again. There's Elijah. We know who Elijah is now. The Tishrite, who was the inhabitants of Gideon, 
said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, be whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years according to my word. Elijah said, and I believe James says it's three and a half years, I think it is. Ahab, according to the God that I serve, no rain. And no rain happens. Back to Revelation chapter 11, verse 6. So Elijah is in 11, 5, 11, 6. Uh, Revelation 11, 6. So Elijah is in verse 5, chapter 11, verse 5, Revelation. And 11, Revelation 11, verse 6. These, these two people, but we're reading about one, have power to shut up heaven that it rain not in the days of prophecy. That was Elijah. 2 Kings 1 and 2 Kings 17, verse 5 and 6, it's Elijah. It's the second coming of Elijah. And when he shows up on this planet Earth during a tribulation period, you don't mess with him. And he's going to mess up your weather forecast. Plain and simple. All right, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, verse 6. Now, Elijah said, hey, no rain, and everything's going to dry up. Now, this, now what water's left over turned the powers of water to blood. Whatever water's left in the tribulation period during this time, turn that water into blood. So, let's go to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus 17. Genesis, Exodus. Let's find out who this character is. I mean, we don't want to read the Old Testament now. Exodus 17. That's not the one I want. Exodus chapter seven. seven. Broke the wrong number down. Exodus seven. seven. I put a one. In the wrong place. And I can just now turn the Bible. Exodus seven. I'll get there. Exodus 7, verse 19. Exodus 7, verse 19. You realize what's going to happen in Exodus with, with Egypt? It's going to happen in the whole world in the tribulation period. It's going to happen again. Because Israel didn't learn their lesson. In Exodus 7, 19, the Lord spank unto, there's our other character, Moses. Moses and Elijah. Revelation chapter 11. All right, let's see what Moses can do. Say unto Aaron, take thy rod, stretch it out, thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon the streams, upon their rivers, upon their ponds, upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood. And that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt. You know Egypt's a type of in the Bible? A type of the world. You're not going to be able to get bottled water in the, in the grocery store in the tribulation period. You're going to get a bottle of blood. And Moses Aaron did so, and the Lord commanded, he lifted up his rod. And they smoked the waters, and they were in the river, and in the sight of Pharaoh, in the sight of his servants. Pharaoh's a type of Antichrist. In the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river turned to blood. In the sight of Pharaoh, the Antichrist. Go so back to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Verse 4. Oh, 
verse, yeah, verse 4. Revelation 11, 4. There's Moses and Elijah. And if you don't believe it's Moses and Elijah, look at what these two characters in Revelation 11 are doing. They're doing the same thing that Elijah and Moses did in their lifetime. Revelation 11, 4. These are the two olive trees. There's two of them. The two candlesticks standing before God in the earth. Zechariah. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devour their enemies. Elijah. If any man will hurt them, they, in this, he must in this manner be killed. They have power to shut up heaven, and it rained not in the days of their prophecy, Elijah, 1 Kings 17, and have powers over the waters and turn them to blood, Exodus 7, and to smite the earth with all plagues, is that not Moses? Let the frogs come, let the flies come, let darkness come. It's the plagues of Egypt. And I can, I can just see, and it's not really common, but I can just see Moses and Elijah waking up one day and say, uh, Elijah, yes Moses, watch this, frogs. That's nothing. Wow. Fire. Well, lice. Uh, famine. Moses and Elijah are going at it in front of the Antichrist, in front of Pharaoh, and the Antichrist and Pharaoh are getting very irritated. Meanwhile, there's no water to drink, and it's not raining. And remember we read a couple weeks ago that Elijah has a battle with the prophets of Baal and Mount Carmel, and he says, listen, bring four barrels of water. We just had a drought. And you know what Moses would do? Those four barrels of water? Watch this, Elijah. Yeah? Turn it to blood. Moses will go through the grocery store. Oh, drinking water? Turn it to blood. There's coming a famine of water in the tribulation period because Moses is going to turn what water is left over into blood and Elijah is going to say, hey, let it not rain. It's hmm. remarkable. Yeah. And it's all literal. And you know why it's turning to blood? Because they are killing the, the they are killing the 144,000. They are murdering Jews. Listen, Adolf Hitler was a puppy dog compared to what the Antichrist is going to be and how he's going to kill those Jews. The Jews in the tribulation period are going to be public enemy number one. And if you turn into a Jew into your your favorite congressman, you turn a, a Jew into the to the police department, you're going to be rewarded. And Jesus said, listen, you, you, you took care of me while I was in prison. You visited me when I was sick. You, 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 you fed me while I was hungry. And they're like, when did we do that? When you've done it unto my brethren. The Jews will be in persecution. And God's saying, fine, you want to kill the Jews? You want to spill their blood? Go ahead and drink their blood. And then you can't go to the store and buy anything unless at that point you have the mark. That's when the, the mark does not affect the church age. Now, if somebody came up to me and said, hey, you, you must take this injection, and this injection for coronavirus has, you know, the mark in it, and also, here's my arm. Well, it's got the mark, it's got the 666, and when the rapture happens, my clothes are going to fall to the ground, my guts are going to fall to the ground, and whatever they injected me is going to fall to the ground, and I'm going to go up and be with Jesus. I don't care about no marks. That's not my time. I don't care about the mark. And mark has nothing to do with it. You give me a license plate, a 666, I'm going to put it on my car. It has nothing to do with me. I am going out at the rapture. What happens to before the tribulation, we are pre trib we are looking at something right now that's not going to happen. We're going to be in heaven like, whoa. Amen. One day we're going to be in heaven. There's God, there's Jesus Christ. All right? There's the cherubims, Moses and Elijah. One day Moses and Elijah is going to be gone. Where did they go? They're down there. Whoa. This mark will happen after the rapture. After the rapture. We, don't, we will not see any. We'll see it from heaven. One day, when we're going to see Moses and Elijah at the throne before God, one day they're not going to be there. 
they're going to be down here. So let's keep reading. Wow. Verse 7. And when they shall finish their testimony. Oh, by the way, those plagues, I'll name them out for you. The water's going to turn to blood. The frogs. The lice. The diseases. The boils. The thunder, lightning, and fire. That would be Elijah. Mm -hmm. It says in Exodus that there was a fire that ran along the ground. Was burning things up. That's Elijah. Hmm. Locust. John the Baptist would have been hungry. He'd be sitting there thinking, ooh, a buffet. <laughs> darkness. By the way, that darkness comes at the end of the seventh year of the tribulation period. All the seals, the vials, and the trumpets, at the end of that period, there's darkness. And guess who gets on a horse and says, ta-da, ta-da, here I come. Jesus, Jesus Christ and the church is behind them, Revelation 19. The end of the tribulation period is the sun goes dark, the moon goes dark, and the stars. There is absolutely no light at the seventh day of the tribulation period. None at all. And they're going to look in the sky and they're going to see this light coming and it ain't going to be uh, Rudolph. Amen. It's going to be Jesus. And Jesus will have a sword out of his mouth destroying the enemies of God and the Jews. I will curse them that curse you. So, and then the death, then death. The last thing that happened in Egypt was death. Death is going to happen when Jesus comes. So, verse 7, chapter 11, verse 7, Revelation. And when they shall finish their testimony, when they're done, at the end of the three and a half years, the beast, that's the Antichrist, type of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a type of the beast. That ascended out of the pit, bottomless pit, shall make war against them. There are three great, great world wars yet to happen according to the Bible. Three? Three great wars. Only one. The, the four horses of the apocalypse, the third horse brings a war. Here the Antichrist is making a war. And then Jesus Christ, when he comes back, and makes a war at Armageddon. So there's a whole bunch of wars coming. So he finished the testimony, the beast that sent out of the pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Now Moses will die twice. Moses died, I forget which mountain, before he got in the prom he never got in the promised land. Hmm. Moses is going to come back to life and he's going to die again. Poor Moses. Elijah was raptured in the eyes of Elisha. The horses of chariots came, a fire came, and he caught up to heaven. All right, Elijah was raptured. Elijah's coming back to life, and the Antichrist is going to kill him. Poor Elijah. The, one, the only one that's ever raptured and never dies again is Enoch. Enoch is a type of the Christian. When, if we are raptured, if the rapture happened right now, and we are caught up. We will never, ever die again. Those that are alive remain shall be caught up. You'll never die like Enoch. It's not like Elijah. Do not compare our rapture. Don't look for when Jesus calls the church. Don't look for the chariots of fire. Don't look for the horses. That's not us. Because Elijah will come back and he will die. We that are alive and remain are never going to die. That's false doctrine of Christians in Baptist churches. Because here's Elijah, he, he, he was raptured, he's, he's walking, he's talking, and the Antichrist shall kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Keeping your hands in Revelation 11, run over to Hebrews 13 real, real quick. A couple books back, Hebrews 13, and we'll give you the location with the Bible. And I would not want you to say, this is what Stiley said, but this is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. It don't care what I say, it cares what the Bible says. Hebrews 13, verse 12. 
Hebrews is written to who? Guess who? Hebrews. Duh. <laughs> duh, duh, duh. It's a church epistle. I am not a Hebrew. I'm a Gentile saved by the blood of God. So talking to the Hebrews, Hebrews 13, 12, Wherefore Jesus, we know who that is, also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Well, where did Jesus suffer? On Mount Calvary. Where is Calvary? Calvary is outside of Jerusalem. So if you pay all your money to go to Jerusalem, and you give the Catholics money to say, this is where Jesus was crucified. Excuse me, sir. Yes. The, the one that's called father that has no children. Yes. You got your collar on backwards. And number two, this can't be where Jesus died because this is in Jerusalem. Hebrew says he died outside the gate. Jesus did not die in, in uh, Jerusalem. He died outside the gate. Of course, Catholics don't read their Bible. And Hebrews chapter 9, verse, I think, 24, and to the rest, the, the end of Hebrews, it's not in your Catholic Bible. Because you would hate to have Hebrews chapter 10 in your Catholic Bible when it says Jesus suffered for once. And the Mass suffers Jesus weekly, daily, or twice a year. Of course, that's Bible. So, Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, Where our Lord was crucified was outside of Jerusalem and that holy city, God says, is like Sodom and Egypt. I guess that city is no more holy. Why is it not holy? Guess who's sitting on the mercy seat right now? The abomination of desolation spoken about Daniel the prophet, the Antichrist. The Antichrist is sitting in that temple on the mercy seat saying, I'm God. Don't believe me? Charismatics? You don't believe me? Watch fire. You don't believe me, Charismatic? Look, the Antichrist is dead. Give him the power of healing and resurrect him. The Charismatics are going to love the Antichrist because he's going to do all kinds of wonders. That's why the Charismatic movement is devilish. We don't have those wonders in sight. There's no such thing as a gift of healing. If you, if you have the gift of healing, come with me. I'll take you over here to this, just one hospital that's behind us, and we'll visit every single room, every room, and I want you to do your healing. If there's a gift of healing. I know a healer, and I told him that. Let's go, and he can't do it. And he's too, oh, I got the gift of healing. Come on, why won't you come with me to the hospital? Do you realize if you really had the gift of ministry of the healing, do you realize you wouldn't ever have to work again? If you could walk in the hospital and say, 100 bucks, I'll heal you. You have a lifelong job, but you ain't got it because it ain't got to be. Oh, I, people, this is why people love me so much. Are you saying this at the present time? Present time. there was one at a time. What's that? Healing. Jesus healed. healed. Well, the yeah, disciples healed. Healed. healed, Judas healed. All the other uh, gifts that were Paul healed. Healed. Paul healed. Once the apostles died, then the power went out. Once the Bible was completed, but then it did exist. But it did exist. Oh, it did exist well, when Jesus and the apostles. Yeah. But when the Bible was right. written and complete, the miracles went away. I'll show you that in a moment if I remember. Remind me. Uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead body shall lie in the street of that great city, Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where also the Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. And they got a note here, Psalm 79, verse 2 and 3. I didn't, I didn't look that up. but Moses and Elijah dropped dead. They're killed by the Antichrist, and their bodies are laying on the ground. And when you don't get buried as a Jew, that is bad. 
One of the big things of the Jewish people is when you die, you get the proper burial. It is an abomination for the Jew if that's serious, if you're not, if you're not buried. And they shall dwell near her, verse 10, shall rejoice over them and make Merry Christmas. All right, let, 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 let's, I'm wrong. Well, let, let me, Merry Fourth of July. Merry Birthday. Merry Thanksgiving. You say that? No, you don't. You say Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Birthday. Happy New Year. Why is Christmas the only one that has Mary? Because Revelation chapter 11, verse 10, they'll make Mary and send gifts one to another. There is your Christmas celebration. And it has nothing to do with Jesus. And it has to do with Tammuz, which is a study I'm doing right now. Tammuz is a fallen god who happened to die and happened to come out of the grave alive. Who happened to have a mother that was, vir was virgin and all that other nonsense. An antichrist. They shall give gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented, tormented. Moses and Elijah are tormenting the people in the tribulation. You know how Jesus described hell or the rich man described hell? He says, I'm in torments. So what's the expression? Many people will come up to me and say, well, this is hell. No, it's not. Number one, Christians don't go to hell, so it can't be hell because I'm here right now. And if the Lord comes in our time and Moses and Elijah shows up, it's going to be described as hell, as the rich man that was in hell saying, I'm in torment, and the Bible describes their time on the earth as torment. It will be likened to hell. Two men causing a great cat catastrophe. And you're worried about corona virus? You better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved and go up in the rapture and not be here. Amen. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. Boing. And great fear fell upon all of them that saw them. So right in the middle of their Christmas celebration, these two prophets, boink, they're standing. And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying, Come, say unto them, Come up hither. Now, I don't know in the church rapture, I don't know if the world's going to hear come up hither. There's a possibility, but I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. I really don't know. But I, right here, this one says, the world's going to hear God say from heaven, Hey, Moses, what? come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. That's Acts chapter 1, verse 9, when Jesus ascended. And their enemies beheld them. When Jesus went up in Acts chapter 1, the disciples held, beheld him. At the same hour was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. There's your tithe. You want a tithe? The tithe? That's the tithe of Jerusalem. It fell. And the earthquake was slain men, 7,000. So do you know how many men are going to kill, be killed in Jerusalem at this point? The Bible says 7,000. Not 6,999, not 7,101. 7,000. Because that's how much I believe the Bible is true. And remain, the remainment, those that were left behind, were frightened and gave God the glory to the heaven. That will anger the Antichrist. And the, war, the second woe is passed, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. That all happens during the tribulation period. The Christian does not need to worry about that. Now, one, that question, Mark chapter 16. That signs and healing. Mark chapter 16. Matthew, Mark. Paul had the gift of healing, but it was dying. At one point in time, he's, Timothy writes him a letter. And Timothy said, oh, 
Hey, I got this belly ache. Oh, man, my belly hurts. And Luke, who was a doctor, traveled with Paul. Luke, the beloved physician, traveled with Paul. And Paul looked over and Luke said, Luke, yes, Paul, Timothy's got a belly ache. You, you know the problem he's got with his stomach. It's bad. And I guess, why don't you just heal him, Paul? Because it's dying. Well, tell him to drink a little, a little wine for his stomach infirmities. First Timothy. Or second Timothy. In Mark 16, verse 19. Uh, no, well, 17. Mark 16, 17. And these signs... And 1 Corinthians said, Jews require a sign. These signs shall follow them, the disciples, that believe, and the people. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Acts chapter 2. They shall take up serpents, Paul, after the shipwreck. They shall drink any deadly thing and shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. By the way, Judas had the same power as this until he died. So then, after the Lord had spoken these things, had spoken unto them, he was received up to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. The signs were to confirm that we are the disciples, we, the, we are the apostles of Jesus. And when the apostles died, and all 66 books were put together, there are no more of those signs. We don't need them. So when we're witnessing to somebody, they say, listen, the Bible says you're a sinner. Show me a sign. No. i got to show you Jesus. We're by faith today. Faith is, a, is the things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. It's not a show no more. And the Bible says not, I'm going to heal you. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Once God sealed the 66 books, we're Gentiles. We require wisdom. Not sign. So, going all the world and preach the gospel. Not signs. Now the signs are coming back in the tribulation because that's all Israel. That's all Jewish. That's all the temple. That's the law. But during this time, the Gentiles, Gentiles get saved. Faith and belief in Jesus alone. There are no signs. Now God does heal. I can't heal. Don't call me to heal you. I'll pray for you. James says I can. Uh, a pastor can anoint a, a person with oil. But God has the healing. God is able to use a doctor to heal you. But I can tell you a hundred cases for every one person that gets healed. He died of their pain and sorrow. But we got the complete Bible, received by faith. Let's pray. Lord God, the Father, I just thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for the marvels of your word. And Lord God, I thank you for the eyeballs. I've got to read your word. And Lord God, I thank you that your word is available. And Lord God, that your word could be read to me. Lord, they're telling me next week I'll be dizzy from my surgery, Lord. And I'm glad I can hear the word if I can't read it. Lord God, just blessing each one of us today, Lord. And as we go forth, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, sir.